guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make skate guards or skate soakers or whatever you want to call them. So I am making two separate tutorials and that will be for this one and this one. Today we're going to be making this variation. This one is made out of terry cloth and waterproof canvas and then a little strip of just webbing and that will help to protect the blade. Um, if you decide you want to walk with them on. Um, this is the other variation. I'll have a link in the cards in the description box um, down below uh, so that you can learn how to make these ones. This is a really cute one. This one's meant to kind of protect your very precious skates. Um, your blades keep them from getting scratched in your uh, skate bag. They still have the terry cloth lining, but they have this really soft minky and it really gives this fun pop of color and looks really adorable on your skates. So these are just more utilitarian, they're tougher, you know, you throw them in your hockey bag, who kind of cares? Um, so like I said, we're going to do that today. Okay, so I'm going to go over some of the fabrics that we're going to use in today's tutorial. I'm going to be using a product called OtterTex. It is a waterproof canvas product. I got over at Fabricville, but they sell it uh, at most fabric stores and online. So use that for the outer for the outer fabric and that's just going to help keep it really durable and it won't rip or tear. Um, I'm going to be using Terry for the lining and that's just a, a towel. This is literally a towel that I'll be using today. You could definitely use um, microfiber cloths. So like you could just get a pack of cloths from the dollar store and use those. That's great for moisture wicking and keeping your skates nice and dry so they don't rust out. Um, but you can use cotton if you want to or uh, just regular canvas or wax canvas. Um, whatever you want to do, it's really up to you. But today, I will be using the waterproof canvas and just an old towel. So I will also be using some webbing for this tutorial. Webbing is just like dog leashes or backpack straps. It's that type of product, so it's you know really strong and durable. And we're just going to put it right down the center of the skate guard, and that's just going to protect. Um, kind of give some padding so if your kids, you know, decide they want to walk around the house with their skates on, you know, the blade won't be able to cut through this. You can buy this over at your fabric store or you can go to the dollar store and literally buy leashes and just cut them apart and use that. This is actually an old leash I got over at the Dollar Tree. So today I'm going to be using this one. I just got this at eBay. It's super cheap. I mean, it was only like five bucks for a couple meters. And I will put that on the skate guard as like a cute accent. So you can really, you know, add your own personality with the different colors. We will also need some half inch elastic. I tried quarter inch, but it's not quite strong enough. We're going to be putting elastic along the edge here. So a half inch seems to work perfectly. So get a bunch of that. Okay, so I cut out my pieces. I'm using this lime green outer text and this towel. And I'm not going to cut any webbing yet or my elastic. Um, I will have the measurements over at the blog post. I'll have that link down below or in the description box. Um, there you will find a few different sizes, so like a small, medium, and large. Um, all that information will be over there and then you can find products and tools that I use in my videos over there as well. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is we're going to get our webbing and we're going to put that down the center of our fabric, our outer fabric. I'm just going to cut a piece and I'm just going to go ahead and burn off the edges. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but just in case your webbing likes to unravel. And we can do that. Now you can of course get your ruler and we can make sure that it is perfectly centered. Like that. Um, you could, actually you know what I'm going to do? You could get actually uh, double sided tape like this. You could get a glue stick 
and glue this down. You can pin it depending on the fabric. I don't really want to pin this just because I am using that waterproof canvas so it's just basically going to not really be waterproof anymore if I just keep adding more holes to it. So I'm just gonna go like that and oh, I got some like that. And this is not to be perfect. Yeah, you know, just so just so that it appears even. Okay. And then we're gonna do a top stitch along either side. I can see in the camera it's not perfect. That's as good as it's gonna get. So we're gonna sew along the edges, so right up to it, um, like an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and that is going to secure that onto the canvas. Okay. So I'm just gonna line up the center of my presser foot, and then I will just move my needle over a little bit. So as long as I keep my eye on the middle of the presser foot along the edge of the webbing, then it should be perfect. Oh, that's perfect. And I just did it like right, barely, barely on the edge. And I'll just do it the other way. Okay. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is put our terry cloth on top. So we're just doing the right sides together and we're going to clip down the long edges. Now if you're using um, just regular canvas you can of course use your little pins but because I don't want to poke more holes I am going to use my clips. And we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance down both of these long sides. Just like that. Okay, so we're just going to do quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now this Terry does like to shift a lot, so if you wanted to use your walking foot, you could definitely do that. Is how it's going to look okay so this is how it is looking so essentially it's just a tube now um, so now we're gonna add on the elastics I'm gonna do it a little bit of a faster way which is basically take my elastic I'm not gonna cut it I'm going to tack it onto one end and then I'm going to pull it we want our elastic to be 100% maxed out so basically we're not gonna pull it this much. We're gonna pull it as much as we can. And when we do that and we sew that elastic on there, it's going to cinch it up. Okay, so I'm gonna do that at the sewing machine and I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see this good. 
but I'm going to take my elastic and I'm just going to put it and because I have a good seam allowance I'm just going to do it on the um, on the on this side of the seam allowance not on the inside so I'll just do that and I'm going to sew go back and forth if you want to do a zigzag stitch you can but because we're maxing out the uh, the elastic um, I don't find that it's completely necessary okay so I'm just pulling on my elastic as much as you can you might need to kind of pull on the fabric or push it through the machine just because because you're pulling it you're basically you know countering the feed dogs that wants to you know bring your fabric back to you so just uh, be mindful of that and we're gonna sew Usually I do this the opposite way, so I think um, <laughs> that's why I look like I'm having a hard time. I usually don't. And I just kind of shift down, re-pull, and then keep going. And you might even be able to see that the gathering, the gathering has already begun. And this is a technique that you'll find in clothing a lot, so it's well used. Okay, when we get to the end, we're just gonna go back and then go forward, just locking our stitches, and then we'll pull it out. And as you can see, it is nice and secure. And then we're just gonna cut off the excess elastic. So again, and back and then pull okay okay so this is how it is looking kind of looks like a diaper <laughs> but that's the elastic right there Okay, so now we're gonna flip it with the right sides out. Okay, so now that we have it flipped out, we're actually going to be doing a seam down the center of this. And I know that now that the elastic's in, it's a little bit more difficult, but the only way we can do this is when it is right sides out. So. I'm basically going to take it and then kind of flatten it at the top, make sure that the fabric is lined up and then start sewing a little bit. And as I go, I'm going to manipulate the fabric to, uh, to lay flat. It's actually quite easy. It just looks like it would be difficult if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So like I said, I'm going to put it into the machine and we're just going to sew right down the center of the webbing. And we'll just start. And this is just going to help keep the fabrics together so it doesn't like flip inside out. So we're just going to kind of push the fabric out to the side and then sew. It does not need to be perfect in any way. the elastic out and flatten. Okay. So that is how that will go. Okay, so after we do that, then we can start to close up the sides. So basically what we're going to do is put our fingers in there to pull out the elastics and then we're going to fold it uh, with the right sides together and if you can try to fold it so that the 
webbing is perfectly even, then it'll look a lot nicer on the outside. If you want to do a zigzag stitch or a serger on this little seam here, that will finish off your edges, but you really won't see this edge um, when it's inside, when it's turned the right sides out. So um, it's not really a big deal. So we're just gonna do a straight stitch right around, right up across there. And we'll do that on the other side. And then we're pretty much done. We are done. We're done. <laughs> so easy, so cute. And of course you can really customize them with, you know, your child's favorite color or prints. I know that this waterproof canvas does come in prints. I can't get my hands on this freaking print. <laughs> um, not in Canada. But I think like fabric.com has some. Super cute. I, I could order it. It would ship to Canada, but um, there's also the risk of duties and stuff. And some of the duties, I mean, it can be like 50% of your purchase order, which is just not worth it at the end of the day. Okay, hold on. Sometimes it's a little hard because that elastic is just biting you. I'll show you what I do when I put it in the machine so that I can uh, make sure I get that top edge really good. Okay. All right. So I can put it into the machine. I like to go from the folded edge up just because it's really bulky here. So it kind of helps to get over the edge or the hump there. So we're just going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back tack really well. And if it's still curling, I'll sometimes take like a pencil and see how it kind of like brings it out. And then I'll just hold it with my finger and then go. And just want to go over it a bunch of times you can do that I'm just going to use my pinking shears just to kind of finish off that edge like I said you could do an overlock stitch or you could do that serger right there um, but with the waterproof canvas I don't necessarily want to put it through my serger I'd rather keep that machine for you know, knits and things. Okay, so now we are done. Now we can just flip it right sides out and then test it out on our skate. So we're just going to push those corners out like that and like that. And then this one is going on my son's. And I don't necessarily care to have the top of it hemmed. If you wanted to do a stitch um, across the top so that it stays perfect, you can do that. Um, but I like to have it like this because even with that, um, you know, with the terry cloth being exposed like that, it just will have more spot for the, you know, the moisture to um, absorb into. But yeah, that is it. So of course you got to make two because there's two skates. So I hope that you enjoy this tutorial. And if you haven't already, go over and check out this one. I know it's crazy looking, 
but it's so cute. You can also make these ones um, without any stuffing in it also, but these ones are meant to protect your blade, so super cute. I hope you enjoyed. If you do, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Go over to the blog post to make sure that you get all the materials and lists and things you need to make this project. If you do decide to make this, then come over to Instagram and Facebook. Those links are also in the description. And join the community and show us uh, how your project turns out. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye, guys! Mm -hmm.